Tricks, get your tricks. Tricks. A fruit delicious part of this complete breakfast. Bursting with the sweet fruity taste. You can see grapey purple, blood green. I gotta tackle those tricks. I hurt my eyes are playing tricks. Tricks. It's a tricks bowl. And it'll bowl you over. But silly rabbit tricks are for kids. Color changing trick shaped water squirters. Now there's one free in marked boxes of tricks. Join the bunch. True Pop. Watch Tasmania weekdays on Fox Kids. Welcome to Fox Action Theater. Chaos! We'll be right back. Kool Aid Flavor Mania is on tour. Styling in the islands with the hottest flavor combos ever. For our new island trip. When they come alive, evil can't survive! Gargoyles! Disguised as a gargoyle, the evil Xanatos swoops into attack! But mighty Goliath breaks free! Lexington fires! And heroic Brooklyn charges into battle on the Rippin' Rider Cycle! Get him! Xanatos is stunned! And Goliath flies in to unmask him! Not you, Xanatos! When gargoyles come alive, evil can't survive! Gargoyles! Goliath, Brooklyn, Lexington, Xanatos! Other figures and vehicles eat sold separately! Last not included. Oh, Ritz Bits Peanut Butter Sandwiches with the delicious taste of real peanut butter on the inside and buttery little Ritz Crackers on the outside. Who can resist a Ritz Bits Sandwich with peanut butter? <laughs> Ritz Bits Sandwiches with cheese with the taste of real cheese on the inside and buttery little Ritz Crackers on the outside. Who on earth can resist Ritz Bits Sandwiches with cheese? This is Bobby's mom. You gotta have a look. See it all the Dipsy Tool adventures of my little Nancy. Watch my little cowboy. Bobby, Bobby. Catch Bobby's World Weekday right here on Fox Kids. Now back to our show. Hey! We'll be right back. On the Power Rangers show, sometimes the monsters can be kind of scary. <laughs> but since they're only for candy, nobody really gets hurt. In real life, though, Real things can happen to make us feel afraid, and we need to talk about them. So join me and the other Power Rangers for this special, Talking It Out, after an all-new X-Men, later today on Fox Kids. Coming up next on Fox... Where's the jerk who calls himself the dick? I am that jerk with the courage of a lion. <laughs> and the grace of an eagle. Oh, yes, <laughs> looking good. There's no job he can't handle. I'm doing laundry. He's the incredible Tick. My code name is Nick. For awesome adventure, don't miss your pal. Let's hang ten for justice. Watch the Tick coming up next on Fox Kids. Hey, kids, if you love watching all the Fox Kids shows, then let us take over your radio, too, with the Fox Kids Countdown. Cool. The Sunday place where you get to meet all your favorite Fox Kids stars. Smooth. And talk with a special guest every Sunday. Yep, yeah. Let's eat, cat, sir. As they help count down the top hits you request. <laughs> Ready to let those hits rip, Chris? <laughs> Tick, if you got a radio, then you've got the Fox Kids Countdown. I wish I thought of that. Check out the sounds of the Fox Kids Countdown. Sunday mornings on Q102, today's best hit music. It's about good guys. His name is Gordy. And bad guys. Kidnap Gordy. And America's newest hero. I'll get you. People say it's the boy. Gordy. We're performing hero pig fan clubs. We'll sign Gordy to a lifetime contract. A talking pig. Who's our little star? Becomes the world's richest tycoon. Your empire, sir. <laughs> Never <laughs> underestimate the power of the pig. Gordy. Woo! Rated G starts Friday, Friday in theaters everywhere. everywhere. Jump and jump up here? I don't think so. Running swing here? I don't think so. Then where? I'm going DZ at the Scrammery Zone. Where I can cut loose and be on my own. DZ's made just for me. A place where I can really cut loose. It's all here. Go DZ today and have a ball at eight Philadelphia area locations, including one near you. I'm going DZ. I get what I be. 
I'm Odd Stoner. How do you think they cram all that gram taste into Golden Grams? Okay. There's this island of giants. And these cargo planes drop huge built graham crackers. And these giants crush them into those little squares. So they're like packed with graham taste. Touch with a dab of honey. Golden Grams are part of this complete breakfast. <laughs> this is serious, serious. Man, you two dudes are huge. Golden Grams are crammed with grams. Now back to our show. Introducing Kellogg's Rice Krispies treats in a box. <clears throat> May we suggest when satisfying your craving for the chewy, marshmallowy, homemade taste of Kellogg's Rice Krispies treats squares. Don't forget your friends. New Kellogg's Rice Krispies treats in a box. Got a craving? Ronald, you've redecorated Hamburglar's room. Hamburglar deserves it. He's been a big help at the Happy Meal Workshop. He hasn't taken a single cheeseburger for a long time. Yeah, uh, here he comes. Uh, Hamburglar, this is your new room. Wow, Rubble Rubble, thanks. Let's give him a few minutes to look at old. Oh, boy. He's changed. So polite and stuff. He's not the same old Hamburglar. <laughs> Like your new room? It was a uh, delicious rubble rubble. Oh dear! He's the same old hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor combinations like the banana berry and raspberry lemonade. <laughs> Wacky fruits. These gummies definitely move to a different beat. Later today on Fox. It's time to come out and play. Xavier's brother is back. Yes, what he finds out. He's scared to death. And what the X-Men must do. I don't like it. We'll shock you. Watch an all-new X-Men later today on Fox Kids. Hey, Bob. This is Wolverine. Be here later today because the walls are going to come a-tumbling down when the Juggernaut returns to Fox. Yeah, Juggy's back and mad enough to bust this town in half. Looks like we're going to have to teach Round Boy a little manners, X-Men style. So don't miss when we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Juggernaut himself on an all-new X-Men later today, right after The Tick, who's next on Fox Kids. We call ourselves... Next Saturday! Venom. It's the spine-tingling conclusion of the alien costume saga. Venom will tell the whole world who I am. Does Venom have the power? We find to destroy Spider-Man. Make for you close up. No! Find out on an all-new Spider-Man next Saturday on Fox Kids. Now a message totally for kids. Take a new picture at least twice a year. I want to see your face nice and clear. Help to show your parents and policemen too. I'd snap a new picture if I were you. I'd snap a new picture if I were you. I'd snap a new picture if I were you. But can she see why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Is that on TV? Get a clue, Mom. Any kid can see the intense taste of cinnamon and sugar swirled all over every bite. I see that. Cinnamon Toast Crunch, part of this complete breakfast. Mom doesn't miss much. Now you can eat with your fingers with funky fun finger spoons. One in each specially marked box of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Catch
Welcome, 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 everyone. How are you? I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> Hold on. You guys got to know what I'm talking about. Let me, <laughs> before we get into anything, because <laughs> you guys are going to sit there. Like, what the fuck is Claire talking about? Hold on. You guys got to see this. Yeah, it's the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to beat the shit out of you. You're better run, Charles. Get that shit out of my face, bitch. No, no, all this, no. is, this is like, hold my on. Face. <laughs> okay. Piss back your ass, bitch. That's you only six that. years old, but this somebody put like that's one of the earliest things ever on YouTube. <laughs> that particular like the video I clicked on was like only six years old. I guess somebody like refurbished it or something, but like yeah, the one of the first things YouTube like when it first came out, it's still amazing. Like it hasn't lost its luster. When YouTube first came out, it was like, dude, like <laughs> I remember I was in a band and my drummer slash singer, I'm at his house uh, and he's like, he's like, have you seen this? He types in YouTube. He's like, dude, like just give me something, you know, pretty much like anything that's ever been on TV, you know? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and he just looks it up. And he just finds, and then we just went down this rabbit hole of just mad, crazy, insane shit. Uh, and that was one of those, <laughs> that was one of those things. We just sat there just fucking stoned and cracking up. Uh, <laughs> I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, after discussing... Um, Discussing the Athena Brownfield case uh, yesterday. Um, don't think, okay, don't don't think that that old Betty's antics went under my radar uh, from the beginning of the weekend or the middle of the weekend or whatever the fuck it was. It was <laughs> I was watching, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know I'm compelled to talk about it. Um, and again, people, blessed are the clip channels. Like the clip channels went nuts with this shit. Like every clip channel just like that has ever done shit on Betty, like did something <laughs> over this weekend. Um, so I'm going to play a few of those. Yeah. Uh, so, so weird, man. Just... Yeah, so apparently Betty ended up going on um, uh, cams, cracking cases. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and play this one here. Because uh, Chasey Truth jumped on panel too. Now, I didn't really watch it because I, I was like, oh, this is too good to not like do reaction uh, with with my people. So let's just watch this all sped up. She was on Dolly's first. Yeah. And. <laughs> Hold on. Let me see if I could find that real quick. Because I'm wondering. Live from Tennessee. Wow. Okay. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say. 
Uh, it was the open discussion. Let me see. I'm just going to kind of search here. Yeah, this is Dolly's, Dolly's famous panel. Sorry. Just not going to show it until. Oh, my God. Oh, God. How did this go under my radar? Oh, this is just fantastic. Hold on. I just wanted to cue it up here, folks. Okay. <laughs> this is pure reaction because I didn't even know this happened. So, <laughs> um, so oh, this is our, that was the awesome all star Dolly panel here. Uh, <laughs> oh, he is. He's in the backstage. Well, I've only oh, been here like two minutes. <laughs> I just see because I'm on my laptop and you got to stroll Bring down. Hold on. Why is his face not on here? I mean, he, he loves. I've been in there doing that, baby. Yeah. Who's okay, the on, show it. It. Hey, everybody. Uh, like when uh, a uh, conversation uh, is like going, hi, let's hit the hi. mute. I got hey, to donate on my Like somebody's yeah. got to like tell Dolly how to run his own. Okay, this what am this I dude, this tattoo. Jimmy Jams is completely surrounded by blondes. This Heather tattooed rebel guy just fucking kills me, bro. I can't tell if his room is smoky as fuck or if dude's like lens is just fucking filthy. <laughs> Whatever says <laughs> Betty looks pretty. Hey, not everybody's blonde here. I mean, we got tattooed rebel. He got no hair. I do. <laughs> You got me with my fake hair. My fake hair. <laughs> I got hair. Oh, I, 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 I didn't oh notice my God. it. By the way, what am I doing? Hey, we're doing shiny. Oh, oh, what's, the on, what's the latest you got on the uh the damn Idaho four stuff, Betty? Oh, I got nothing. Wow. <laughs> First fucking true thing that she's I mean she goes in early being honest here folks that is amazing she's like I ain't got nothing yeah we know <laughs> you haven't yet no oh, you, know you know what I got actually let me let me be honest uh, I got a lot of speculation. I got a lot of theories, but a whole a whole lot of nothing. I mean, like yeah. I'm sitting here wow. biting nails, waiting for November, or excuse me, uh, March 1st to come around, and everything is uh, pendant upon the investigation being completed. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's a it, that's that's basically the court order. That's the gag order. She asked them when would they be done with their investigation, and. They said, oh, it'll be, you know, March 1st, two more months. So she gave them two more months. But if they're not completed with their investigation, we ain't get shit. <laughs> hey, oh. let me ask y'all something. Did y'all hear that? About well, they wrap, if they like, wrap it up, they'll release. Is it, is it possible that she's just been watching my channel and now, like, because I'm seeing her do this a lot more and more. And it's... It's kind of annoying. And I'm going to be honest. I Normally, I in theory, you'd think I'd be relieved. You'd be like, Claire, like you, sh she can't win. Either she starts speaking responsibly or, you know, like, or you, you know, but one way or the other, you're always going to pick at her. Like, so she can't get a break with you, Claire. Okay, well, bullshit. Um, because <laughs> the reason why it's kind of annoying is because I know her nature. I know her nature. Her nature has been abundantly clear for all of these months and months and months. So <laughs> I, I, I now if she starts doing that, fine. You know what I mean? I get it. Because like I said, a lot of us started off just not really thinking clearly and being more concerned with, uh, you know, getting a lot of clicks and getting views and being controversial and whatnot, you know, as far as being a personality goes, uh, where you kind of put your your morals on the back burner, you put your scruples on the back burner. And uh, this is what I call out these true crime creators for doing. Um, 
And the hopes is not so much that they change. Uh, I mean, genuinely, maybe. Uh, it's just that I'm too much of a realist. But I'm not totally, like, against it happening. It's just that I want it to happen genuinely. Like, because the only way that would genuinely happen is if somebody actually acknowledged their shitty behavior and were they weren't afraid to go shit i i acted like a fucking asshole uh and i don't want to be like that anymore and i want to do better things with my platform that's something i could get behind but when somebody just starts to gradually start to it just sounds like they're copying you know so that people can't say anything bad about them i don't do this because and i don't do things the way that i do them because I want to be right and be in a position to where nobody can say anything bad about me. That's not why I do it because of the reasons that I say I do it, which is simply that I don't want to victimize victims any further than they already have been or may have been, or especially the people who just happen to be around them in their lives. You know, just people just who simply happen to know a victim and then that person gets fingers pointed at all over the internet. This is a person who just recently did this a bunch of times until she was just proven wrong. Every single time, everything that she brought to the table was pure bullshit. She brought that bullshit phone call that got debunked. She tried to say that was his sister. That was Koberger's sister in front of the house. That wasn't Koberger's sister. She tried to say that was Koberger at the, at the vigil. That wasn't Koberger. All of these things were debunked. So basically all of her content that made people click on her channel because she used that shit as clickbait, make no fucking mistake about that. And that's what it turned out to be is just nothing but clickbait because it was all debunked. So make no mistake. This is not somebody all of a sudden who's seen the light. This is somebody who is just desperate to sound more intelligent than she is simply because she has made herself look like an absolute ass for the last, I don't know, <laughs> however long she's been doing this shit. At least uh, what the uh, search warrant. They, they cut the docket off. Like I went on there to I court, like they didn't even give me access to the documents. I've got access to all the documents, by the way, really? even the complaint. Um, me too, but I'm telling you, they, they cut the docket off. Like, you, you know what people do when they have these documents, they show them, they redact them and they show them. That's what YouTube creators do when they have these documents. They don't just claim to have these documents because people want to see receipts. So the fact that people aren't, not one person on this panel has challenged her to show the documents, not one person tells me everything I need to know about that panel. If nobody is asking for it in her chat, that tells me everything I need to know about her chat. These are people that are not interested in facts. None of these people are interested in any facts at all. And I mean, that goes without saying, we've gone over this panel before on Dolly's, uh, which is why I feel like I hit the lottery here because Betty's on this panel now. Uh, this is my all time favorite panel. Uh, I got to tell you, this is my all time favorite panel. Like everyone here, like the stuff they were saying about Kylie Rodney was priceless. I would have been worried about it. But the problem is, is that nobody worth a shit with half a brain is going to listen to these people and take them seriously. So it's just funny to hear their theories. Off, Like you don't, you have nothing. So we know that June's another date. But if there's any dates between now and then, they have to broadcast us that because they will not give us access to the docket at this moment. We we have nothing. Um, can I ask? Well, oh, Warren Betty, what, what, oh, what, what, what been what, um, racking it up, hadn't they? What was the rumor today that uh, there might be a co uh, co-defendant? <laughs> well, here's the deal. Just say so, you don't know. Many of you guys because know I you don't. work at law firms. I've worked at multiple law firms. One of my old bosses is a federal judge. Oh, God. Shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> what about... What, what, what about... Dolly's all... What about... 
that person that code de code defended. What about the code defendant, Betty? <laughs> and Betty's like, you know, here's the thing about that. And then she starts talking about herself. What? <laughs> I, I don't understand this pattern of thinking. And now there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 people on that panel that make up about a quarter of a brain. And um, the issue here is we do have form letters. In any office, I mean, I, I've got to deal with something right now. And I've got, I went back to my old paperwork to pull up a, a master motion to dismiss. You know what I'm saying? So either way, <laughs> we have forms, we have uh, templates and things like that. But we customize those forms, those letters and everything to suit the case. To have the co-defendant, like if I was dealing with this case, if I was preparing it, that would not have been in a letter that I would have sent out, period. If it didn't apply to the case, it's not something that I would have put into a letter. So this whole co-defendant well, thing, yes, it's a form letter. You know, I heard. Um, here, here's the thing about that, though, Betty. You're not a paralegal. I don't believe that you ever were. I just don't. <laughs> there's there's nothing that you've ever said that has made me even doubt my doubt for you being a paralegal. Nothing. You've never said anything that's been like like I've never I've never worked in a courtroom. I've never worked among people who worked in a courtroom never in my life. And 90% of the things that you say regarding court, I could, I could tell you is wrong because it's common sense. And here you're supposed to have this professional knowledge over everyone else. And yet you're always wrong about everything that you say. And not only that is every single time that I've had somebody who claims to be an attorney who actually makes perfect sense when they explain something, uh, they always say that you're wrong too. <laughs> like every time, every time, like every time I've had mystery Maven in here, uh, like she is actually amused by listening to Betty talk about the law. She's amused by it. Um, it's really funny. Um, um, what's her name? Michelle walks. I, I, she's over across the pond, one of our friends across the pond. And she, she's like, it's a form letter. Yes, I understand it's a form letter, but we customize those form templates to match the case. Mm -hmm. And my mother, Mama Bullhorn, she was talking to me about this whole entire thing. And she's now here's a theory. Okay. So what she's saying there basically is uh, that. Since there is no co-defendant, why put it on there? You would customize it to where that wouldn't be on there because it doesn't apply to this particular case. But here's the thing is, Betty, the case is still open. So this is just a theory. I've never worked in a courtroom. I've never filed court papers. I The only time I ever had to do that, I had a lawyer doing it for me. So I wouldn't know. But my theory would be that the reason why it says that is because the case is still open and the possibility that a co-defendant may appear at some point, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> the possibility that that paperwork, that document leaves that open so that it can't be used just in the event that a co-defendant ends up appearing in this case. But I'm probably dead wrong about that. But I know that that makes a lot more sense to me than sitting there and saying, well, I wouldn't have put co-dependent or co-defendant on the on this document. I mean, but you don't know why they put it on there. And it's probably to be thorough. There's a lot of redundancy. Like when you read these court documents, you'll see me skip through a bunch of shit. 
because a lot of it's just redundancy and they're just saying these things in front of something else to be thorough so that the the the, the opposing uh council can't fucking dispute it in some way and say somebody's rights were violated or they failed to 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 state this in clarity you know it's just called being thorough real lady justice uh prosecutors do not give private or private practice attorneys their forms from 20 years ago when you claim to be a paralegal <laughs> okay <laughs> um yeah so yeah this is just more of betty trying to sound like she knows what the fuck she's talking about and has no idea what she's talking about she said what about dad what about dad you know he may not have known what was going on but he went out to he flew out there god knows what they did they cleaned the house they cleaned the car i mean this could be a whole brian laundry Roberta, Christopher, hey, let me give you a shovel wow. type of situation. I, I don't know. So she's batting zero so far when it comes to this case, people. I want to be very clear about that. So far, as far as her theories go, dead in the water, all of which have been completely disproven simply by the arrest of Brian Koberger. Simply by that one simple action, all of Betty's shit has been fucking debunked. Everything that she has said regarding this case prior to Brian Koberger's arrest was dead wrong. Okay? So, I mean, she accused boyfriends, friends, roommates. She accused everybody under the sun except the guy who was actually arrested for it. Okay? Nobody could have guessed that. Right? And this is exactly the kind of case that I'm always talking about. Like, you don't know. You don't know shit. And just because, just because statistically, it's usually somebody that they know, it doesn't mean that you get to start throwing accusations and start throwing mud balls and see where they stick. You don't get to do that because you're victimizing innocent people. And every single person that was, that was, investigated into by internet sleuths who was not Brian Koberger was victimized. Make no mistake about that. And there was a lot of them people before this dude got arrested. A lot of people got dragged into the mud and Betty had a lot to do with that. She dragged everybody. She pointed fingers at everybody. So <laughs> My point being is this theory now that she's here saying, which is also really fucked up. Now she's basically implying that uh, if not outright saying that Brian Koberger's father was an accomplice and helped him clean up. Um, and that's the thing is, is I'd be more mad about that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it pisses me off. Because this is a man who's going through hell right now because he's found out that his son just decided to kill four people. His son, who in his eyes had a very bright future ahead of him. He was he had the whole facade going. He was he was doing great in college. He was he had a bright, bright future ahead of him. If he wasn't somebody who craved the feeling of being a cold blooded killer. Now, we have yet to find out what motive actually is, but it's pretty safe at this point with what we know to basically come to that conclusion that that's all Brian Koberger wanted was just to murder people and try to get away with it. But now... Betty now implying this, it's not so much that it makes me mad coming from her because it's coming from her. It also just makes me think logically, logically speaking, what has she been right about so far? And not just this case, but really any case. What has she been right about? At least, at least going into 
the investigation. So far, she was wrong about Don and Candace. Now, we don't know that for sure, okay? But what I'm saying is nothing has come about that actually even remotely implies that the two of them are guilty of the things that she accused them of to their faces, screaming and yelling and getting them fired from their jobs. So there's no evidence to indicate that her theories about Don and Candace were correct. Now, Billy Joe, Quentin's grandma, okay, not a savory person. But you had no evidence that there was actual child abuse that was taking place. Maybe some child neglect for sure, considering the drug use that I believe was going on all over that household. Sure. But you standing in front of that house demanding that she be arrested and complaining and screaming and criticizing the chief of police there. of negligence, of not doing their job, playing favoritism, whatever. But while you were doing that, and while you were making their investigation more difficult by wasting man out, manpower on having to make sure that nobody got out of hand and ended up hurting you because you're screaming in front of their homes, so just to protect you, they were taking away manpower that could be helped towards finding Quentin and finding out what happened to Quentin Simon. But it was more important for you to get attention. So you were screaming and yelling through a bullhorn and they had to assign police officers to make sure that nobody hurt you because the neighbors are calling saying, if you all don't come down here, I'm going to fucking do something. Meanwhile, Dolly is assaulting women verbally, physically. I mean, and what were you right about? Because at the end of the day, you were wrong about the police department. You were very wrong about Chatham County Police Department. You were very wrong about the chief of police there, Chief Hadley. You were very wrong about the way that they handled that case because they went through hell to find Quentin's remains. Two million pounds of waste, of garbage, dirty diapers, rotten food, rat feces, human feces. Two million pounds of garbage and ended up producing the results that you were accusing them of not even making an effort for. Oh, uh, I'm not denying that Ro Rose encounter. Yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't always this scrupulous person that you see before you now. Most definitely. I've made some mistakes. Uh, that's not, I, that's, I've actually told that story a couple of times on my live streams. So you're not, you're not exposing me for anything here. I'm the kind of person that takes accountability for their actions. Okay. I understand that the process of changing for the better means acknowledging the reasons why you need to change for the better. And I have done that and I do it every day. Can you say that? I doubt it. Otherwise, the nature of which why you would choose to leave that comment in my chat proves that you're not that capable. So... But moving forward, moving forward, um, yeah, as far as the Quentin Simon case, she was dead wrong about everything there too. Um, and then moving on to this case, the... The Idaho slayings, um, 
yeah, <laughs> she speculated and pointed fingers and was dead wrong about every single thing. And now the latest thing, after her record of being dead wrong, which is why, that's why I'm I'm not as mad about it as I would some other creator. But with her, to me, it's just, like I said, logical to just not <laughs> invest anything that she's saying, not invest anything into what she's saying. Nothing. It's ridiculous at this point. Considering her track record of being constantly wrong and calling herself a true crime channel, wrong in every which way, wrong in her theories to wrong in, 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 in her, in her rationality and her rationing, uh, uh, her rationalizing her actions, even wrong in that. It's just funny to me. But I'm just saying that there's, there's, I wouldn't have put the co-defendant in that letter if it was a letter coming out of my law firm. Thank you, Miss Her law questions? firm. Bullhorn, <laughs> can I ask you a question? Who's speaking? Or can anybody even hear me? It's uh, Dave, Three Dot Dave. I know yeah, Three Dot Dave. Hear me? Hey, never talked before. Awesome to talk to you. I'm just wondering, in your mind, with all the facts that you've seen, with uh, all the speculation, in your opinion, what if you like had to grade the case, would you like put it in the 75 percentile of guilty or where would you rank that? I would rank this at like 95 percent. Uh, I'm with you. Thank you for even, answering my question. You got to understand three dot Dave. I was never a prosecuting type of person. We were always defended type of people. So it was it was, you know, law firms that defended people. OK. Uh, <laughs> hey Betty now I'm not a lawyer I've never worked for a law firm but I think what you call the law firm that you worked for was a defense law firm a law firm that specializes in criminal defense okay that's, that's what you would call that I think I don't know I've never worked for a law firm before. I mean, you know, but I guess that's the technical term is, is, uh, in your opinion, what, if you like had to grade the case, would you like put it in the 75 percentile of guilty or where would you rank that? I would rank this at like 95 percent. Uh, I'm with you. Thank you. For answering Even, my question, you got to understand, three dot Dave. I was never a prosecuting type of person. We were always defended type of people. So it was, it was, you know, law firms that we were we were defendant type of people. Yes. Uh, thank you for calling Brewster and Brewster. Um, what type of law firm are we? What do we specialize in? Uh, we're not the prosecuting type of people at this law firm. We are the more the defendant type of people here at Brewster and Brewster. There is a $1,000 retainer. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the def de defendant type of people. This is what that law firm was. Just so you know, Betty's law firm was defendant type of people. <laughs> defended people uh, prepared cases for defendants, you know, index, you know, for trial for defendants. And I'm telling you, there, with this whole situation, we've got. Three major problems. <laughs> Dolly passed One out. is that he didn't, he turned his phone off at a certain uh, time frame. If he's never turned his phone off during that certain time frame, that is going to be evidence that's going to be used against him. 
he turned his uh, his phone off on a certain time frame. Now, he, how did you come to that? How did you? Because that's fucking crazy. I mean, you've got to be an experienced uh, paralegal for the defendant type of people. You got to be an experienced paralegal for the defendant types of people. Okay. To be able to come to the conclusion that the phone pings are going to be used as evidence against him. Okay. Now that's a hell of a hell of a conclusion to come to, especially when it's what's used as probable cause to make a case against him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we all know that that's going to be used as evidence against him, Betty, because it's in the probable cause affidavit, you know, uh, listed as one of the reasons why they had probable cause to indict him, arrest him, charge him. Yeah. That's, I, I don't know how the law works. You're the paralegal, not me. I don't know. He, he turned it back on. He did this whole loop around. Like, even if it, like, we're seeing on some of these uh, chat rooms and everything that families coming out and saying he, he's not guilty. It's a friend that he was, he was booting up with, that he was, you know, partying with and everything like that. Well, if that was the case, then why are you there in front of their house 12 different times? Why is nobody ever present in your vehicle when anybody sees you on camera, pulls you over, or anything like that? So he's got a lot of hills to overcome in this uh, defense for himself. Because <laughs> Agreed. He, and all the metadata with uh, his internet uh, moving around. I mean, I, if he's been like oh. so careless... In all of those ways, he had to be careless in his internet uh, profiles. Also, thank you so much, Galactic Unicorn. But but but, she has seen all the facts and knows all the things, defense type things. <laughs> oh my so, god! And then also the skid marks, possibly. I mean, I've heard skid that marks. he also he changes tires. Skid marks? You mean like in Dolly's underwear? Between. The murders and the point oh, that he got I, picked I, that's up. That's all speculation. Three dot days. Right. It has to be all but speculation. But there, there is a lot of information we don't know, and I'm sure that case is solid. I mean, that has to be why they didn't actually like pull him off of the grant after of his parents' house when he was uh, cleaning his car and putting trash in the garbage can is because they have a really solid case. Yeah. This is okay. Look, I want to, I want to change the subject for a second. This is a female, I mean that caller is uh, not an idiot. Field, you know. Thank you. That is coming out. Right. The only thing. Thanks, the Betty. The only thing about that dude <laughs> that lacks credibility with me at all, like the only thing about that particular caller, uh, is that he's asking Betty for her opinion. That <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what does it for me. Um, it's like, wait a second. You know what I mean? You, you know, like, like you ever, you ever like you're, you're talking to somebody, you're getting to know them some, and then, then they, all of a sudden they just throw a huge monkey wrench and say something just completely and totally stupid. You know, you're, you're having great conversation with them for, but you know, and then boom, out of nowhere that like, they just drop a stupid bomb where like, to the point where you're just like, Okay, I need to get out of this conversation right now. Uh, I was very much misled <laughs> in the last uh, minute and a half that I was talking to this person. I'm hearing, I'm hearing that they're charging the caregiver with the murder of the little girl. Now, how are they coming to the conclusion of a murder of the girl? And Betty, this reminds brings flashback back to Team Foul Play that they stopped trash pickup he's talking about a completely different well, case. i think i you know to be honest with you and whether <laughs> haters like it or not you and i along with the people that we collaborate with are watched by law enforcement because we yeah you're watched by law enforcement because you harass people and people are constantly calling them and complaining about you yes you're being watched by law enforcement i wouldn't have a lot of faith in law enforcement if i didn't think that some form of law enforcement was watching them and their movements, keeping track. 
Because at some point, somebody is going to want to press charges against them. It's just a matter of time. Somebody is going to want to press charges against Betty, and somebody's going to want to press charges against Dolly. It's just a matter of time. Same with MGL, same with JLR, and same with Olivia. So, I mean, let's just be real. Um, what they're doing is fucked up. As we go out to the cases, we do what is necessary to bring attention to these cases. And we do get a lot of information. We have to be honest. Okay. No. Um, okay. They're not bringing attention to these cases, Betty. That's not what you're doing. You would be doing that if you were doing it, if it weren't for cases that you see the whole world already talking about. And so you decide to jump on a bandwagon and do the bullhorn Betty flavor and add that to it. You take a case that the whole world is already talking about. The attention is already there. You're not bringing exposure to it because you are overwhelmed with the exposure of it by everyone else on YouTube because you're motivated by numbers and you see the numbers that they generate for those channels. And so you decide, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel out there. Because nobody is as fucked up as I am to do that. It's not that they're bra they're not brave enough to do it. That's not the case. Because what you do is not it is not a, a, a an expression of bravery. It's not an example of bravery. What it is is an example of not actually caring about justice, because you're impeding and interfering with an open investigation. You are tampering with potential witnesses. You are tampering with potential suspects. You are giving defense attorneys reason to be able to create doubt amongst a jury. And it's bad. What you're doing is wrong. It's not good. It's not just pointless, oh, look at me out here acting like an asshole and acting stupid. No. Yeah, we can look at you that way and laugh at you in the process. But overall, normally I would just ignore you if it wasn't harmful. Because you're not doing anything good. You're not bringing attention to these cases because you the attention was already there. You've never jumped on a case that nobody else was talking about. Why don't you use your influence that way? Why don't you take your, this is the thing. This is what I challenge you, Betty. I challenge you too, Dolly. A case that nobody is talking about. A missing persons case that absolutely nobody on YouTube is talking about. Then take your travel money, fly out there, and start looking. And film it. Then you're bringing attention to a case then you're bringing awareness to a case. But when you're just jumping on a bandwagon and making a sideshow out of something that everyone in the world is already talking about, you're not bringing anything to anything. You're just acting like an ass. And again, I'll say it one more time. You're interfering with an investigation by possibly tampering with, with potential witnesses and potential suspects. Creating, re creating reasons for a defense attorney to be able to create doubt. Totally, literally counterproductive to what you say you're doing out there. Totally and completely. At the end of the day, this, I came out very boldly. I knew I was going to be trashed. It was crazy because I wasn't trashed before law enforcement got out. And I was bold enough to say this child is dead. We have watched these cases go on forever and ever. You're talking about okay. them bringing in um, citizens. Yeah. Guessing. Guessing that the child's dead before there's any evidence. That's not a good thing either. Now, in this case, yes, but I mean, we already kind of knew it. We already knew. Everybody already knew. You weren't like presenting some sort of revelation that Lilani did something to Quentin. 
As a matter of fact, you thought that it was Billy Joe, which you were wrong about. So don't sit here and act like you've ever been right about anything, which is exactly what she does on a constant basis. Every time she's live, like right now, she's just trying to blow herself up. And Dolly's just letting it happen. I think Dolly took a nap. Citizens, private citizens to help them. And then them telling, don't, we, we can't have you like, guys look at involved Dolly, anymore. Now we're going to be getting clues. I, I liked how she said that. She's so sweet. Do she Dolly is straight up weekend at Bernie's right now, bro. Look at him. She's such a nice woman. But at the end of the day, she is so transparent in her body language. Like we, uh, as soon as she started talking and, and <laughs> sweet as this, this lady is, like, she's like, like, we're looking for clues now. You know, we have to do this and we have to do that. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, okay, now we just move from a missing person to a criminal investigation. Yeah, we know here's the, be here's the one thing that confuses me is they're charging the, the people with murder, with the murder because the little girl's gone. Only one person. Only what? one person is being charged what? with murder. Yeah, and they took the vehicle that was in front of the okay, car. Okay, so they're talking about the Athena Brownfield case, which we talked about yesterday. Um, and we don't know. We honestly don't know. Now, I mean, I'm a realist, but I, I'm just saying for the sake of being thorough, we honestly don't know um, what, uh, what murder that this guy is being charged with. Um, he's just charged with murder. You know what I mean? But yet they're still searching for Athena. Uh, they're still talking about her. Like, I mean, it seems like their investigation has shifted over to, to, to more of a, a recovery than a, than a search. Um, but, uh, it's not. We still don't know, like I said, we still don't know what what the circumstances of this dude being charged with murder are. Law enforcement has not given any statement. Uh, they're still trying to treat the public as though to look at Athena as though she's still alive. Because um, it doesn't sound to me like they're sure that she is dead. And that was it. Okay, but here's the thing about that is, is the little girl that was in the house, she said that she couldn't find her sister, and that seems like that was in reference to her sister was there at one point, and now she's not. She was. This is what I perceive happened, and, and I could be completely wrong. Perceived. This is pure speculation. This is not to be taken as fact whatsoever. That's how she perceived happening, so she saw this before it happened even though she's talking about it in past tense got it i'm sorry at the end of the day a man that was in charge of a little girl that did not belong to him that took off and went to to, to phoenix arizona leaving two children behind Allegiant. a grown man and a little girl now a little girl is missing i'm sorry uh people can beat me up all they want but i believe this man sexually essayed this this little girl what and she she died as a result of that and then he knew that and he fled leaving her sister behind where does and your mind the, the, come the, up you with know, this mom, shit or not mom but his wife was off bopping boyfriend there's literally nothing okay absolutely nothing to indicate that there was any SA involved in this entire scenario at all. What the fuck is she talking about? Like, you're always wrong. Aren't you even the littlest, littlest bit afraid of being wrong about something like that? How can you not even be just a little bit afraid of being wrong about something like that, considering your track record of constantly and consistently being wrong. Wow.
boyfriend, right? Mm -hmm. Boyfriend one. I don't know if there's boyfriend two, three, or four, but she's off hopping boyfriend, boyfriend one, leaving all of these six kids with this man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that six children is a lot yeah, to handle. It, as a parent, as a parent, and you split up with somebody and you go deuces and they got the kid, you're not responsible for that kid at that point. That person that is not true. Okay. So all I saw was this Alyssa woman uh, constantly putting up, I mean, spending clearly hours on TikTok, making TikTok videos. Clearly, you could tell that that's how she spent a lot of her time uh, and the Instagram posts and whatnot. Um but here's the thing is she's sitting here implying that um, a man is incapable of taking care of six kids. Um, I mean, if she can do it, okay, but a man can't do it. But there's a lot of situations where the man is a lot more qualified and a lot more uh, a, just a better bet to leave the six kids with than the woman. There's a lot of cases like that. So to assume that uh, uh, leaving a man with six kids is where she went wrong, uh, no, <laughs> no, she went wrong in a lot of different ways. But um, I don't think that if she had left him, left the kids with him, that she would necessarily be charged with neglect they've got to have some evidence against her for neglect but leaving her with the other guardian that's not neglectful that act that one particular act is not neglectful so you can't sit here and say and and your logic for saying that betty is is that because he's a man because he's a man leaving a man with six kids is too much so that's why she was charged with neglect that's ridiculous it's Asinine. Wow. Not true. How do you figure? Hey, out? I'd like to say real quick that uh, disclaimer that we're all about opinions. This is all hypothetical, Thank and you. we're it, it's just about uh, everyone having a voice. So yeah. everyone out there that will go, oh, 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 no, we're just we're just talking. If let me just put this in perspective for you, Dolly. You if, custody of the kids. That's the main thing. Nobody has custody of any of these kids. No custody. So they no just, custody. So no the, custody the husband agreement. and wife they split up and they just worked it out. That is okay. not their mother and father. See, that's not true. Someone has legal custody over those kids. I don't think that the person, the people that were quote unquote, taking care of them, uh, had custody, legal custody of them, but someone has legal custody over those children. They're not vagabonds. Okay. They're not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're not, uh, they're not off the grid, you know, like someone has custody of these children. I promise you that unless, I mean, the, these kids, I seriously doubt that they were born in a barn and have been wandering ever since. Uh, and then somebody just took him in. No, someone has legal custody over these children. It's just a question of who, and we don't know who. And like I said, I have a list of people, but that was just put on a social media post by someone. I can't vet that and, 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 and verify it to be correct. So I'm not going to name a bunch of names claiming this is this person to these children. And this is this person to these children, because I can't verify it. That would be irresponsible. And then I start naming naming names and then people start, I mean, I don't think anybody in my audience would do it, but people would start trying to contact these people. And why, why could you, how could you leave those babies with those monsters and blah, 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 blah. And then for all we know, they're not even the right people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, not that that's okay to do, even if it was the right people, I'm saying it's going to happen, but imagine if you had nothing to do with nothing. And then all of a sudden you're getting bombarded and blamed for whatever happened to this, these two kids that nobody's fucking claiming. It's super weird to me that nobody's claiming these kids.
I mean, that's what's really gotten me in a twist about the Athena Brownfield case. Is like, why isn't anybody claiming these kids? What is happening here? Now, it's possible, though, that somebody has and and law enforcement is aware of it. And they're probably like, just don't ever don't publicly say anything. We're handling the investigation. Just cooperate with us uh, because it's quite possible. I wouldn't I mean, honestly, kudos to law enforcement if that's what they did. If there are parents out there that actually love these two kids and are missing them and probably made a, a bad choice. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know the circumstances, but I'm not quick to assume that <clears throat> these kids were neglected by the whole world. It's quite possible that people who cared about these kids who just weren't in a position to be able to take care of them, trusted them with people who were probably in appearance more capable of taking care of them. And they trusted them with them. It's quite possible that these were good parents, just not great, you know? Because they just, for whatever circumstances, for whatever reasons, they weren't able to take care of their own kids. It happens, but it doesn't make them bad people. So I don't know the circumstances, but for now, I'm going to assume that that's the case. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm going to have to assume that that's the case. Um, Dina Fisher, that's awesome. Welcome. <clears throat> I'm really glad that you like it. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I just refuse to contribute to the inevitable uh, public lynching of these people, whoever his parents or her parents turn out to be. Um, you know, I'm just I, I. I just don't want to be a part of that. That is a family member of those girls. Yeah, I not mom, not dad, no. See, none of this agreement, is verified. No order of the court, no nothing. Family member just saying, "Hey, I'll take care of your kid," and now we got a kid missing and a, a kid walking down the road, starving to death, looking for her little sister. I thought she was in the house and asked the mailman. No, she was walking down the road. She was hungry, and she didn't know where her her sister was. This is a sick effing case. Because I heard there was more kids than that. I heard that the kid was Six in the house by itself. Total. And then I heard there was four more kids. Yeah. Dolly, kids I know where there. you're going with this. This is me. I chose them. Like, she's not letting anybody fucking talk. Okay. Now, Dolly, I had, uh, I, I finally got custody of my grandson. But when I didn't have custody of him, I could take him to the hospital if he got sick. Yep. And they wouldn't ask me anything i don't know if it's because i am but i would i'm not really his grandpa he calls me grandpa i'm his second cousin but they didn't ask nothing i just said look he's sick he needs to be seen and they took him straight back without even calling anybody he was seen without even the parents permission or judges and that's in virginia no I, that's that's hard to believe because i went through it's the same not, thing they, i got hurt not, as a minor in virginia New laws have changed. That's what I try to t explain to people is that the they changed. cannot they cannot deny you medical care. No, they can't There's deny you. Thing. I'm sorry? They can't deny you medical care. They just have to have permission to treat you. Um, If I can interrupt really quick. When I was in school, someone stabbed me in the head with a pencil. Oh, my God. They called my parents because the tip of it was still in my head. They couldn't remove it. The nurse was not even allowed, even over the phone, to even get parental permission to pull it out of my head. They actually had to leave work to come pull it out of my head. I thought that was so stupid because I was scared, first of all. And oh you, you knew it was in there, but you didn't know how far kind of thing. Now, and it, I want to be clear. I'm not laughing at the fact that she got stabbed in the head with a pencil. That's fucked up. I don't, I don't want anybody to get stabbed in the head with the pencil. I'm not laughing at that. <laughs> Listen, but I'm going to be real with you. I ate a really large edible before I started the stream. And the thought of them talking to somebody on the phone and being like, hey, yeah, so there's a part of the pencil stuck in your daughter's head. Uh, you're going to have to come down here. Well, can't you just pull it out? Um, 
No, I'm sorry, ma'am. We don't have the we we're, we're not at liberty to be pulling out pencils from kids' heads. Uh, we're gonna need you to come down here and pull the pencil out of the kid's head. <laughs> I, <laughs> to me, that's if I it, look. If you saw that in a movie, you'd laugh. You know what I mean? Oh my God! Speaking of which, I saw this movie last night uh, called Hereditary. It's kind of old. It's like from 2018. But yo, that movie was so like if it nothing scares me anymore. But that's like the first horror movie where I was just like right on, you know, like if I was 10 years old and I saw that movie, I would have had nightmares for weeks. I would have had nightmares for weeks. That movie was super scary, dude. Um, I was really entertained. Uh, so I just wanted to drop that recommendation. Like if you're looking for, for me to recommend a horror flick that almost never, ever, ever, ever happens. I think horror movies are just, they're too stupid, you know? Um, like I like my old ones, like when I was a kid, but to me, horror movies are made for kids. If you're an adult, they're not going to scare you. If you're scared by a horror movie as an adult, there's something fucking wrong with you. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, like you're, there's, Two types of women, okay? Like, <laughs> there's two types of women, at least in the 80s and the 80s, freak out flick, okay? The ones who didn't get scared at scary movies were like the keepers, okay? They're really independent. They're cool. You know what I'm saying? The ones that turn out to be like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, don't leave me alone. Can you leave the light on in the hallway? Like, those kind of women, like, and you're grown and it's just a fucking movie, like, you're really high maintenance and you're not going to last in a relationship. Somebody's going to leave you. Nobody's going to put up with that on a long term basis. Nobody is. Uh, I'm just letting you know. It's just the more you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I can't. No. No. Like, you're an adult and you're, you can think logically. There's no reason why a, a, a production literally for your entertainment designed for your entertainment should genuinely scare you. I understand if you're like 12, but as an adult, no, no, there's no reason for that. Um, now I understand jumping like, oh my God, startled. That's fun. Oh, oh, oh shit. That got me. That's yeah. You know what I mean? That's fine. That happens to everybody, but yeah, if you're the type of person that actually genuinely you're an adult and you get scared of, 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 of a scary movie, it's yeah. But this one, okay, this one was like, yeah, I, I didn't really like the way it ended. I thought it ended kind of stupid, but everything that happened in it was really fucked up. And visually, it was like a thing of nightmares for sure. It was the most terrifying thing. My parents, like I had to wait a half an hour longer for them to come get, pull that out of my head. <laughs> they wouldn't allow medical treatment in the school. Am I a dick for that's laughing at exactly. this? Exactly. But that's in Ohio. Everybody involved around that little kid should be in jail. You know how I feel about it. Lock them all up. The mama, the daddy, the caregiver. Do we know? Wow. I'm, I'm the same way. way. Trust me, I don't like arguing with anybody. I really don't. Block them, but... <laughs> block them all up. There shouldn't be Do no they know where, where the parents are. are. Yeah. yeah. I guess. I guess under that logic, Dolly, you're saying just everybody who is around the kid, lock them all up, right? Lock them all up. Whether they committed a crime or not, fucking lock them all up. Uh, does that mean that you should be locked up for your brother's crimes? Just a question. Just a question. I get your passion, for sure. Do they oh, know what the parents are? That was so much nicer than you saying you that. Way, but, yeah, uh, all well, we need well, is a well, press fudge for Bullhorn uh, Betty. Uh, do they know where the parents are, Betty? I don't know where my pants are, but maybe they know no. where theirs are. Just... No, that's what I'm saying. Do they know where theirs are? I don't know. 
So the dude was in Arizona, right? Where was the woman? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So she didn't leave. She didn't leave. She just went off with a boyfriend. She, this is the way that I've been reading it online. Now, granted, this is all speculation, not coming from law enforcement. How it went is nobody's really talking about the parents, but apparently the parents left these children in their care. There must be some kind of animosity in the marriage because apparently she's off with boyfriend. She leaves the house, leaves husband with all six kids and goes out and just oh, she's is a with another man and yeah. you know they're all in love and <laughs> shit. And now next thing you know, that's okay. the only reason why now she's charged. The thing. Now here's the thing. Say say I'm with a girl, okay? And she is the caregiver for her family's kids. Then me and her are like, yeah, this ain't working. And Jesus she takes right. off and I take off. She's the one responsible for the kids, not me, because they weren't my family members' kids. You see what I'm saying? No. Yeah, I think the reason why they charged her is <laughs> That was completely irrelevant. I, I went through the uh, social media of this Ivan guy, and like there's wounds, you know, you're kind of looking at these children like we did for Quentin Simon, you know, where we're seeing all these kind of like cuts here and, you know, injuries on these children. And I'm thinking the reason why she was charged is because she knew her husband was violent and she left the children behind while she went and bopped her boyfriend. Bopped. And that's the caregiver, <laughs> right? Caregiver <coughs> one. Betty. <laughs> Only a person with a hairdo like hers would use the word bopped to to describe sex. Bop. Only, only someone with that hair would say bopped her boyfriend. There's no... <laughs> There's no other way around that. It's so weird. It's like a genetic thing with her. Like, just look at her. It's so strange. It's just a genetic thing with her that, like, she would she would say things like "ever loving." <laughs> She'll say things like "ever loving" and and bopped her boyfriend. She was bopping her boyfriend. Oh, skinny pop 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 pop. One is um, Alicia, caregiver two is Ivan. Alicia right? left with boyfriend. Ivan was left with six kids. Leave a man with six kids. I'm telling you, one of them is going to be in a grave. And, and the two of them ain't what? his kids. Two of them are not his kids. Are the and they are the two kids. kids. He left a man, man with Ivan. Boyfriend, Alicia right? left with boyfriend. Ivan was left with six kids. Leave a man with six kids. I'm telling you, one of them is going to be in a grave. And, and the wow. two of them ain't even his kids. Two of them are not his kids, yeah. or the and they are the two kids, kids that he left behind. Yeah. Because Betty Betty doesn't hate men, right? <laughs> I mean, dude. Like, I got to, okay. Again, folks, I got to play this one more time because I can't believe my fucking ears. Kind. Kid. Kids. I'm to boyfriend. Ivan was left with six kids. Leave a man with six kids. I'm telling you, one of them is going to be in a grave. And, and the two wow. of them ain't even his kids. That's two of them are not crazy. his kids, are the and they are the two kids, kids that he left behind. Are the other four his kids? Yeah. So he left all four of them. Like nobody kids. spoke up. No, he took. You know what I mean? They were in. Like, how many men are on this panel? How many so-called men are on this panel? I see two. Now, I don't know about the avatars, but I see two. And not one of them argued <laughs> in defense. Like, what? We're in Phoenix, Arizona with them. The four kids were. And their parents. Yes. Okay, then what do you want from that guy? He took his kids. He left yeah, two kids, kids, five and four, actually yeah, five them, behind. If them kids ain't his responsibility. As yeah, a man, they, oh my they God. Dolly, Dolly. Yeah, as, this yeah. Man, Wait, at, least, at least Betty's calling him out. 
<laughs> like I'll give her that. Like she gets, she gets, she gets a slide on this one because dude. Yeah. He was responsible for those two kids and it doesn't fucking matter. You fucking idiot. If nobody, listen, if I'm not responsible, nobody said to me, right. If nobody said to me, Hey, Will, can you watch these two kids? If nobody said that to me, right. And then yet all of a sudden I'm the, the only adult left with these two kids. Well, I'm going to prioritize them and I'm going to make, yeah. So whether these kids are legally your responsibility or not, like as a man, as a, as a human being, yes, those kids do become your responsibility, at least your responsibility to make sure that they end up in good hands. So he's sitting here, Dolly is sitting here defending the fact that this guy left two kids to fend for themselves. Wow. Wow. You know, and, and even Betty is going, fucking Dolly, Dolly, what are you saying? And he just straight up said, well, those two kids aren't his responsibility. So, wow. You're a, you're a class act there, Dolly. He insulted those children in his care. Yeah, but My dude, okay. you know? now she's, see, you see what I mean? She had me, bro. She had me, dude. You see what I mean? Look, this look at what just happened. Let me you guys may not have caught that. I'm telling you, one of them is going to be in a grave. And the two of them ain't even his kids. Two of them are not his kids. Listen or close. The other four his kids, kids that he left behind. Are the other four his kids? Yep. So he left all four of them kids too. No, he took them with him. They were in Phoenix, Arizona with him. The four kids were. Yes. Okay, then what do you want from that guy? He took his kids. He the left two kids, 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 five and four, actually yeah, five behind. Uh -huh. See, his kids ain't his responsibility as a man. They ain't his family. Dolly, Dolly. look, watch. This yeah. man you? insulted those children in his care. God damn it. Yeah, but you see what I'm talking about? She had me right there, right there. I was rooting for her. I was like, I was like, yes. I was like, get her, get him, get him, Betty. Like the shit that this dude was just saying, man. Oh my God. I was like, get him, Betty. Like, Dolly, what are you saying? And then she just throws some shit out there saying he assaulted these kids while they were in his care. Yeah. Oh. There's nothing, there's nothing that to indicate that. Now, neglect, yeah, but there's nothing. You're sitting here and you are jumping to the conclusion that he SA'd these kids to death. Or one of them to death. You said that earlier. And you were like, it's just a theory, blah, blah, blah. But now you're screaming about it as fact. <laughs> He assaulted these kids while they were in his care. Like right there. Er, she went from like calling him out on saying the most fucked up shit that a man could possibly say. And then she like ruined it by making something up. Damn it, Betty. How do we know he just didn't leave? Um... The same way we know Summer Wells is dead. No, you don't know Summer Wells is dead. I don't think she's dead. Uh, I, I think she's gone, but I don't see it being the same. Okay. It's not even know, close to being the same. Because if the kids were his family members, I would go, yeah, he left his family members there, but he didn't. He might have left thinking this lady was going to come home in an hour. And so she you tell me. Home. Okay, fair enough. You tell you know? me. I leave my children. Now, I'm going to say my grandchildren. I'm going to leave my grandchildren in your care because Dolly. I need to go a trip in Hawaii. You hold on, to hold on. Let Betty care. say her piece. Dave, did I ask you, Dave? <laughs> say that. Say that in the back Okay. Wow. Did you, did, you guys, did, you guys hear, did you guys hear the latest on Leilani's sign? <laughs> 
Dave was trying to Dave was trying to control the panel, but it's not his live, and Dolly got all all tiny dicked about it. <laughs> Donnie's dick Dolly's dick shrunk, and he went, "Ah, oh, wow. I'm gonna put you backstage." Donnie Simon, yeah. Yeah, has she well, moved her court date? Is there anything? Um, there? They wanted it. They were basically wanting to know if it would be appropriate to put the DFAX reports and it should um, be. in with a murder case. And it should be because yes. her mother should be tried just right along with her. I'm sorry. Her yes, mother has to be of those kids. No different. I love how she says, I'm sorry. Every time she says something completely and totally fucked up. Okay. Again, people, right now, she's saying that her mother should be charged. She doesn't know who the mother is. She doesn't know anything about the mother. She doesn't know anything about the mother's circumstances as to why she ended up uh, uh, leaving the children in the care of the people that are now charged uh, with neglecting her. Um, she has no idea. Betty has absolutely no clue, not even who the mother is, much less what the circumstances were. So, no, I'm not going to sit here and say that the mother should be charged with a crime until I know more. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. So right there, right off the bat, like every time she just jumps on a new crazy ass conclusion to jump all over. And then when it turns out, you know, like, watch, you'll see, like, the mom is going to turn out to be this lady who's just down on her luck. You know, some shit happened. Maybe she has some sort of mental health issue, and that's why she can't take care of her kids. You don't fucking know. Like, nobody knows what the situation is with the mom. And here she is, without any information at all, saying that the mother should be charged with a crime. Then this man having custody of these children, these six kids in his care, responsible, yeah, he, and he, he chose to take he, he, oh, oh, he oh, left oh, the oh, fucking oh, Dolly. We're not going to debate this. He left the fucking five year old in the house without any food or fucking water. Yeah, I know. I mean, she's I know. right. No, there. you don't. But what I'm saying, like she's pissing. He's pissing her off, dude. Kids. It doesn't matter. <laughs> If I if, Wait, if I bring your my child over to I you think Dolly's and expect just, you to take yeah, but care of I think Dolly's just trolling her. I think that's all it is. I mean, I, I want to say that. I want to give Dolly the benefit of the doubt. I, I want to. Even though I don't like him, I still want to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And I want to give Dolly the benefit of the doubt. Like he can't be someone who genuinely thinks that it's okay to just leave a five year old and a four year old to starve and fend for themselves, whether they're your kids or not, or whether you've been charged with the responsibility of taking care of them by somebody or not. You don't leave kids to fend for themselves. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to hope that he knows better than that. And he's just trying to piss her off for the sake of just having her on there and passive aggressively not liking her and <laughs> and fucking with her and her feeding right into it. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because that's what it sounds like. He's saying the most asinine, ridiculous shit and, and it's triggering her to no end. But you wouldn't have brought it over to me. You would have brought it over you to your sister. Me on this. You're talking about children. You're going to be on the losing end of this. I know, but listen. Say my, my, my girlfriend was your family. And you bring your grandkids over and say, hey, I'm leaving these two grandkids. You're leaving them with my girlfriend. You're not leaving them with me that is kin to you. Well, you, you know what, what, Dolly? You can keep debating that all day long. But you know what? At the end of the day, she's in jail and he's in jail. So you can go ahead and debate that. But I guarantee well, you, if you're, you're on the other leave. side of this, your ass would be in jail. And it would be in I jail for more than a leave. fucking bullhorn. Yeah. He didn't leave his kids. He took his four kids. He can't help that woman didn't come back. The That's dolly would you. Jones in. Thank you so much. Too bad you weren't live when she got drunk and started panel hopping. No, we're going to get into that. We're going to be here a minute, folks. I'm going to have to make some more coffee. So I might have to just leave something playing for you guys uh, and step away for a minute. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're going to be here for a minute. Uh, I got nothing better to do tonight. Um, 
So. All right. Dolly, would you leave two kids behind? No shit. Would you leave two kids There's behind? There's somebody backstage. Would you leave two kids behind? There's someone backstage. Yeah, twisted? yeah, but I have a question. The kids he left behind were not his biological. Is that right? Wait a second. It is what? absolutely what? correct. Okay, so okay. let me, let me. All right. The fucking, what is this lady's fucking name again? Her name's not showing up here. It doesn't matter. But this lady's clearly hot for Dolly. It's really weird. Uh, but she's totally hot for Dolly, and now she's gonna like senselessly side with what he's saying. Let me absolutely one hundred percent. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not saying that's okay or right, but men are like that, and it's like okay. in fact, look my, ass and dick. You know? Look ass and dick. Men, men are like that. Right Thank you guys. Okay, we'll start with men. Well, I'm telling you right now, All they right. better be yeah. real. Men. She's totally hot for Dolly, like. Because if she's defending the shit that Dolly's saying right here and saying men are like that, like, just accept it. It's cool. No, <laughs> no, uh, not at all. That's no, that is not a man. If you <laughs> if you see that there are, you know, kind of like the mail carrier, but I don't think the mail carrier was a man. I think it was a lady. Uh, but. As a man, okay, if two kids, and I said this earlier, I could see that there's not going to be anybody else to take care of them, and I'm in this position, even though I might even be pissed about being in that position. Of course I'm going to be pissed about being in that position. I'm going to be like, what the fuck? Where the fuck? Who the fuck is claiming these two kids? Why are they? Why am I stuck with these two kids? Of course. But the first thing I'm going to do is call the cops. And be like, hey, somebody just left me with these two kids, man. They're not my kids. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, you need to do something, you know? And I would call my wife. And it was my wife. I'd be like, listen, you're not leaving me with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, either you take these kids or I'm calling the cops and they're going to take the kids. If you're so dead set on leaving. You know what I mean? But me, just as generally, you know, I mean, if if the if the case were where nobody even asked me to take care of these kids, and I didn't even know who these kids were, I'm not leaving them alone. I'm calling a cop, and I'm going to say, this is what it is. Y'all need to claim these kids, because they're not mine, and I can't take them with me. My house is not kid-friendly. So, <laughs> yeah. Maybe the mom will report them missing and come looking for them, you know, whatever. But I'm leaving them with you. You need to come get this kid, these kids. Real man. I'm a real man. They better be real men. You better be real men or you get the full horn stuck up your booties. I'm right there with you, Betty. I'm right there with you, Betty. The woman, okay? She, you have four kids with her. She takes on two more kids that belong to her sister or cousin. It don't matter. She takes on two more kids and ain't yours. This woman starts sleeping with somebody else, and you decide to leave. You grab. Okay, wait sister or cousin it don't matter she takes on two more kids and ain't yours get a bottle of wine. this woman starts all right so she's getting a bottle of wine sleeping with somebody else and you decide to leave you grab your four kids and leave <coughs> what about the other two kids them two kids ain't his responsibility i don't abandon yet. i don't abandon them two kids Right. I mean, I wouldn't have left them either. But yeah. how do we know they left in that order that he didn't leave first and then she left? So why are you justifying somebody else doing it? If you're sitting here saying I wouldn't have left them either, then why are you sitting here defending the guy for doing it? It's weird, dude. Like, and it's not weird, really. Like, now I'm just realizing that you're like, this is just more evidence of you being a complete and total moron. Like you're you're just talking out of your ass just for the sake of talking out of your ass, and it's clear at this point. That's right. Jimmy's totally right. 
How do we know? Grandma, what would you do? What I you know that Grandma would do. He left the Grandma's a real man. No shit. I don't care. See that? Grandma's a real man. No, uh, she's saying, saying that's a real he's man. Uh, care. I'm going to care for him. Period. Thank you. Uh, actually, or call somebody, oh, 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 or call somebody who is equipped to handle that. Child, the uh, child well, services though, exist for a reason. Is we don't know who left and what order. What if he grabbed his four kids and he left? And then she decides, I'm going off with my boyfriend, and she leaves the two kids there. Right. Is that his fault? No, it isn't. It's not a I mean, he either. actually made a really good point no. there. Now, that's a possibility. We don't know. Okay. Uh, that's actually probably what happened. For all we know, he's the one who left first. You know what I mean? Maybe he's the one who left first. Maybe she's the one who left the two girls behind. But him being charged with murder, I don't know. No. Whoever is watching them kids is responsible for the damn kids. Yeah, at that present time, Period. I would agree. Yeah. But who was it at that present time that was responsible for watching those kids? Ivan exactly. or the other caretaker one and two. The other caretaker is a family member. Well, okay? they're both responsible. Would you guys like to know the law? I would say the family member's responsible and the guy was getting <laughs> hey, the fuck Bullhorn. out of Bullhorn. Good to see you, Bullhorn, Betty. Thank you. What, what Dolly's saying is we don't know who left first is what he's saying. Did the, yeah, did the no, man I agree. Leave? But at the end of the day, the reason why those two people are arrested and not the parents is because at the end of the day, it's like if I left my kids with with you, any of you guys, you guys would be responsible for that child because you guys Amen. accepted responsibility exactly. when you. It, it's it's almost like an unwritten contract. If you want to look at it in that aspect. Okay, well, what so, is this? Right. You, you, you can't, you you can't, can't I, am I allowed to talk? I'm not the parent. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt anyone. Yeah, but, go ahead there, alien booty. All right. Um, so, so when I was a kid, I learned this in, I don't know what grade school. Um, it's called localis. Now, if she's so... Right? And that's... If I she's just, so privy to the law, right, why didn't she just explain it in simplest terms like of course to some degree you're responsible for that child but i don't think you could be charged with child neglect if you're not a a a, a, a declared care digger, care caregiver of this child you can't get charged with child neglect but you could be charged with child endangerment so like let's just say like i said let's say the mail carrier who saw the kids ended up just being like, hey, not my problem, right? And then took off, right? That mail carrier would probably be charged with child endangerment, but they probably couldn't be charged with child neglect. It's not their child to neglect. You see what I'm saying? So, and I don't know the law, but that makes the most sense to me. But why wouldn't, if she knows the law so well, why wouldn't she just explain it in the most simplest terms? You know, <laughs> what? I just googled it real quick, and it's 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 basically what it is. What what is it's Latin for? What what? Just like and you, you guys are saying, and Betty's saying, when you hand somebody over, when you hand a child over, the custody of a child, not not technical law custody, but school, anything of that nature, they assume the parent's role for that time. So they are fully liable for anything that happens to the child. If something happens to your child at school and, and on a field trip or whatever like that, yeah. and there was malfeasance by the um, by the teacher or whoever taking care of them. <coughs> it's not the it's not anyone else's. So I don't, uh, you know. But how do you? I have a question. It's been bugging me. Let's say someone gives me their child to watch. That child dies that day. The cops are knocking on my door and saying, you did this, what happened? I could lie and say, look, that's not my, not even my child. And you know what I mean? So there's no, but she could, she could it, lie and say it, that. How does she it die? Also, Good luck it, in court with that. Well, it, 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 
If he left it with his four kids, right? if he left with his four kids and then she left, then it's her responsibility. That was the way that he held in the affidavit. Was his responsibility. The way it's detailed in the affidavit is that uh, they acquired these kids some time ago, and she left the home to go be with her boyfriend. It, it's documented on his website. He's documented on hers. But there's been some foreseeable time. So she left all those children in the response. Now, I'm not saying what she did was right. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that she did leave the home. Those children and him were in that home. And she once she left that home and he took responsibility of those children, they basically why took do, responsibility why the bear. This is a... Me and you was a couple. In the law's eyes. Okay? And you got your sister's kids there. And you agreed to have your sister's kids there. That don't mean I agreed to it just because I'm your old man. It doesn't matter. You're when wrong. you're married, if your wife agrees to it, you agree to it. Just like when your wife gets in financial that's your wife problems, family. you're responsible for your wife's financial that's your wife problems. Family. That ain't your family. Doesn't matter. When you're married. Doesn't matter. You're you're married. What if you're not married? Your wife does everything your husband does. You are one hundred percent responsible for right along with them, whether you're there with them or not. Okay. What if you're not married? You get married to be. Sorry, I was I was listening to this while I was getting my coffee ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gypsy, thank you so much. I do know the law, and unless there's more than more that we don't know, parents aren't negligent. Right, exactly. I agree with you. Thank you so much. Calamity Jade, thank you. Uh, if I'm separated from my spouse and my two kids have two friends sleep over, I can't wake up the next morning, decide to flee the state with my kids and just abandon the children uh, guests because they're not mine. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, for all we know, these people were babysitting. You know what I mean? And the parents just want to stay anonymous. The parents just, you know, don't want to be caught up in all of the fucking media crazy shit for all we know. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, that's not my theory. I don't know, but I'm saying we don't know any better. <laughs> um, yes, Suzanne, you are correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't know any better. So... Yeah, it's just silly. Let's move on to, uh, hold on. Um, I'm gonna rape you, bitch. You ready? You ready? You ready, homie? You ready? Bitch? Oh my god, that shit got dark. Shut your fuck up, Charles. No, <laughs> Charles, you got in my head. I'm the judge in my bitch. <laughs> I'm the. <laughs> um hold on i gotta find because i watched a bunch of shit since then oh yeah hold on Oh yeah, Chronicles of the Shady uh, did a good, <laughs> but we already went over all that. Okay, yeah, Deets on the Streets, blessed are the clip channels.
Deets on the streets. People. Oh, I think I missed a super chat. Hold on. Was that justice? Thank you so much. Uh, happy Monday, Will. I'm sorry these boobs do not deserve to have a platform. I wish they should all be held accountable for the things they do. I hope so, too. You know, I'm just not the type to, to go trying to make that happen. You know what I mean? Because I had to pause and interject from time to time. But you should be able to speed it up without any issues. I recorded it at normal speed, so... You know, putting it on 1.25 or 1.5 should not be an issue at all. First of all, let me just, let me just clear the factor. I am a professional. This is my job. And the only time I act <laughs> erratic or irrational or anything like that is to bring attention to cases. Profe professional at that. Wait, that's the only time. See, those, those cases already are perfect. They're, they're already covered. They're, they already have attention. You're just bandwagon jumping. I'm you act erratic. Do we need to bring up the clips of that one night when you were super drunk? I know Heels has it on her channel. Or what about tonight on Dolly's video? Hmm? But absolutely with anybody else, absolutely conduct myself in a professional manner. So just so that the people in your audience know, hey, I'm Bullhorn Betty. Nice gal. Nice gal, by the way. Betty is incapable of behaving in a professional manner because she has no experience with professionalism. That's that's real. That's actually the the most accurate way that I could think to put that is is that she's never experienced professionalism um, or or had to be professional in, on any capacity ever. Yeah, by the way. I'm not scouting. I'm letting you talk. I'm wrong. No, no, I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation. You said, it's the first time, man. I mean, out of all the badgering you've done and how horrible of a woman I am, I mean, not really that bad. So, I mean, ask your questions. We've been going at this for a year. Uh, let's let's, let's really well, talk well, about well you you uh, tried to dox me. You tried to dox me out. Are you kidding me? I've never doxed uh, anybody. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that's a bold-faced lie. We know you have doxed people. You do it quite frequently. No, let's talk about You tried to dox me. Never doxed anybody. There's another video. Sorry about that. Um, big props to Deets on the Streets for that video, but hold on. There's there's another one. Uh, I just have to find it, but I think it might have been Jonesen. Was it Jonesen? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I think this is it. Okay. Um Jonesen Jonesen's another clip channel. Uh I think Jonesen was in here earlier and even super chatted. Um but yeah, check out Jonesen. This is a very well done. <laughs> Hey, Betty. Scientific skeptics, awesome. Uh, welcome, Becky G, and gifted five memberships right on. Thank you for that. Congrats to the lucky people who got them. Let's see. Uh, Jersey Devil, Holly Graff, Cami, Nicole Marie, Chapdass, you win handle of the day as well. Oh, what a lucky day for Chapdass. Chapdass. Gets gifted a membership and wins handle of the day. <laughs> Betty, Betty. Okay, you muted her. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, hey Betty, it's 
for the one we spoke once before. I just, I don't watch you, so I don't really know your track record, even though that's what, you know, you say you have a good one. I, I don't, please don't do that. But I do want to see if possibly you can list what you feel like your list of accomplishments are in the pursuit to find the truth for Summer Wells. Great question. Sure, I'd be happy okay. to. Not just Summer Wells, but let's take a step back. Gabby Petito. Like, no, 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 just Summer, just Summer. Like, no, shut up. If you want me to talk. No, no, no. I asked you a specific question, uh, which requires a specific answer. That's all. Oh, what about Don Wells? Summer, summer what Wells. What are your summer, list of accomplishments yeah. in the pursuit of finding the Summer girl? Wells? Sure. We exposed the fact that there were sexual indiscretions going on in that house. We have we exposed the fact that there was walls not protecting a bathroom in which all children see. We exposed the fact that Don Wells, his wife, and... Um, all the people that were involved in this were in that home doing things that they shouldn't be. We also learned that Candace, her first, Hunter's first experience with a woman was with Candace. We heard that Don There's was no evidence of that. None. Everything that she's talking about that she says that she uncovered, she just got from nosy, gossipy neighbors. All pure hearsay. No proof of anything. Oh, I, it might have been Chronicles, uh, Jones and Don Wells took advantage okay. of a woman on the couch. We have exposed a lot of things from abuse to sexual abuse to otherwise from that. Have home. No we have all right. Hold on, Cam. Hold on, Cam. So, other... Betty, my question is a list of accomplishments, not a list of accusations. Right. Oh no, no, these are not a list of accusations. When you have people with firsthand knowledge that come forward and say these things have happened. Those no, are those are, those are, and how has it resulted in those finding are gossipy neighbors? Summer, because she's still missing. Because they've and taken that poor child and dumped her somewhere. And you don't know that, and you cannot prove that. that. Has most likely been moved. You don't know that. You cannot prove that. So you can't say that that is an that accomplishment. Is that is untrue. That is untrue. That's that's how do you, how? All of us that are sitting here in the chat, the only person that has spoke to the actual detective is investigating these cases is us. Me and the team. That's, that's we have that on the team. Team. Betty, if, if you're talking to firsthand sources, and so are all the people. No, no, no. You, you, you said your list. I disagree that it's accomplished nothing. Accomplishments. You have accomplished nothing. No, 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 Because just about every creator in this community has talked with two people who have given firsthand knowledge. Yet Summer is still missing. Summer is missing. accomplishments in solving some drunk, angry Betty is just gold. Summer is still missing. All on Bullhorn Betty. Yet once again, nobody else takes responsibility on this channel other than Bullhorn Betty. What? Hey, look, I'm gonna mute right now. She just went full on Kathy Bates in misery, like right there. Full on. Now, so you can hear you freaking insane woman. Listen, you don't have any accomplishments. <laughs> Everything you came out and said was straight speculation. You have nothing to back totally. up. Totally. Oh, you can flip somebody off. You're really good at that. You you went off speculation. You went off anybody and anybody, anybody and everybody that thought that they could get a little bit of uh, air yeah. time to try to. You, you can see how, how concerned Betty is with professionalism. You can see that. Let's the, let's the take a look. Insane. This channel, other than Bullhorn Betty. What? Are... Hey, look, I'm going to mute you right now so you can hear you freaking insane woman. Listen, <laughs> you don't have any accomplishments. <laughs> Everything you came out and said was straight speculation. You have nothing to back it up. Oh, you can. He's absolutely right too. Like everything that Cam is saying right now is 100 percent correct. Uh, she has accomplished absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Except personal gain. That's what she's accomplished. But she has produced no results. None. Ever. And everything that she says is speculation. Uh, and that's even a kind word. They're just wrong. They're wrong statements. Flip somebody off. You're really good at that. You, you went off speculation. You went I off mean, anybody and anybody. Anybody and everybody. Look at, look at the professionalism, right? She's a professional. It thought that they could get a little bit of uh, airtime to try to, to bash the whales, and you called it facts. You came out and said there were 20 dogs. There was no other entrances in the whales' property. That was a lie. You spread misinformation after misinformation until it finally caught up to you. You went. You didn't know where to search. Nobody wanted you there. You went into a church and filmed a little girl with a spy pen in a church. Robin, like you had. I did not apologize. do that, Cam. Marissa did. I you had no part of that. that. You were part no, of that. I wow. Yeah, way to stand by your team. I love it. She's, I love it. Betty is, 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 you know, she's got a team and they're, you know, they back each other up. Right. But the second that one of them gets the chance to throw the other under the bus, they always take it. I've seen 
MGL do it to her. I've seen JLR do it to her. I've heard, seen her do it to JLR. I mean, these people, just their own dynamic speaks volumes about their credibility. Like that somebody else did it. So because so if we were all accused of what people that we hung out with, can you imagine well, where all our lives would be right now? And furthermore, what have each and every one of you guys have done? Penny just asked me not a specific that, question. That, and you were there as a team. Guys, what have you guys done in that? You were there as a team. You guys didn't coordinate your efforts. Because if I've ever been on a team of any kind whatsoever, whether it be a band or anything else, you always coordinate your efforts. Everybody does something that the other is always aware that they're doing. Uh, and it's always, almost always, a unanimous decision to to act on this. So, you know, either you're a team or you're not. Because if I was on a team and one of my team members did something as bold and fucked up as walk into a church during a service and start filming a child in order to harass the mother of that child, well... You know, I, I'd, I'd, I'd want to be in on that decision, you know, or I would say this isn't much of a team, is it? We shouldn't be doing this together because if you don't condone her actions, then why are you teamed up with her right now? Because what she did was totally fucked up. It's not like it's this little thing. No, what she did was absolutely fucked up. And you sit up here, Betty, talking about how you're this defender of children. But when did you defend that child? At what point? Are you ever going to? In that same vein, what have each and every one of you guys done? When she asked me that, what have you guys have done? There is absolutely nothing that I specifically have done that has accomplished the task of finding someone. And I am not so big that I cannot admit that. There is nothing that I have done that has resulted. And if you don't shut the entire fuck up and let me answer the question. Little girl, you ain't got no fucking balls for Bullhorn Betty. First of all, you asked me a question. I'm going to answer. You my time. What are you at camp? Well, you sure wasn't up in here, wasn't you? You was, wasn't you? viewers. Good luck with that. Uh, I just gave you the biggest boost of your career uh, tonight, so of all of you. You guys don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. None of you guys are out there except Cam. And Chasing Truth, fuck listen. you too. Go back to your fucking cut and share. No, it wasn't Chronicles. Um, I got to see where I thought it would have been Chronicles, but it's not. I hope I'm not going too far. I feel like I'm going too far. Um, Sorry, guys. Give me one second because I really want to find the. F it was like the first one I clicked on yesterday. Um, and I can't see the chat right now. I'm sorry. Well, Patricia Cell, thank you. BHB is the cream of the crap. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> thank you. Um, Or maybe, could it have been? No.
<laughs> oh my god. Um yeah, it's just really Clicks and views was it go this in one? truth. They're different. Just random. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Sorry, guys. Sorry it took so long. No, no. I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation. You said, it's the first time for me. I mean, out of all the bad thing you've done and how horrible of a woman I am, I mean, not really that bad. So... I mean, ask your questions. We've been going at this for a year. Uh, let's, let's do this well, really talk well, about well dog, the, the You tried to dox me. You tried to dox me out. Are you kidding me? I've never doxed oh, anybody. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, let's talk about You tried to dox never me. Never doxed you anybody in my dox. life. Yes, ma'am, you did. We got. Okay. I'm sorry about that. One second. I've got a little technical difficulty here. <laughs> I apologize, guys. Um, I will have that right back up in just a second. Sure, show it. Show your That's receipts. I guarantee um, you'll only okay. hear me you saying me. states you and counties and stuff. I've my... never posted an address in my mm -hmm. life. I guarantee Listen you 100% okay. proved me wrong. Listen so, um, let's see. Let's see. You know, we already got his name here, too. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. Let's just get throw his name out there. Why not? Why not? Benjamin Dwayne Lindsay. Benjamin Dwayne Lindsay. Looks like he lives at 100. So if anybody wants to send him lovely letters, I wish I had a phone number on here. So you guys that's can her. Him up. But you guys can go to his page. That's her doxing Benny Keys. <laughs> Clearly. Like that is literally her doxing Benny Keys, putting out his address on her channel. Start blowing him up and talk, calling him a piece of crap, which he is if you want to. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Encouraging people to call um, him up, encouraging them to show up. Tragedy pimps <laughs> exposed. I love day. you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, didn't aren't you guys the ones who uh doxed your source? You, and then didn't you guys go this is the one I was looking get for. Don Wells fired from his job? Oh, I absolutely did get Don Wells fired by from his job. So for everybody to know. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Shay B, thank you. Just some love because I so appreciate you, your show, and your awesome chat. Thank you. I love you too. I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, that I am absolutely 100%. Now that's Chasing Truth. Chasing Truth saw the opportunity to jump up there and uh, and confront Betty, which I love. Uh, and she was classy as always. She would have jumped off if I would have jumped up there, but. <laughs> Truthful? You but I didn't even know it was happening at the time. Don's right there. I found out the next day. And I guess the red Subaru. I knew it. I knew it. The last house. Which house? The first house. That white truck right there. Yeah. No, no. You want to park down here first? So she's lying because she totally doxed the guy who fucking told where Don and Candace worked. Is it? You're door. talking about the F-150? Is it garage door? No, that's oh, I see it. <laughs> Come on, let's get. This is Chronicles of the Shady. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, Dudley. Go. For everybody to know that I am absolutely 100% truthful, you're damn right I did. Still, why did you do that? I did that because I because you know what? Am I answering the question and which yeah. is asked of me? Yeah, why I did, did that because so drunk? we 
talk to Don Wells and he will tell you because I guarantee he will come on here and be am true. I, am I answering the questions I was asking me? Beautiful with you at this moment in time. Well, you know, yeah, go. Right For everybody to know that I am yeah. absolutely 100% truthful, you're damn right I did. Yeah. Why did you he do that? I did that because I, because that. you know what? Am I answering the question and then what she yeah. asked of me? <laughs> yeah, why? I did that because drunk. we talked to Don Wells and he will tell you because. I guarantee he will come on here and be truthful with you at this moment in time. This moment in that time. That he told us he would meet us here. He had to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. We went around and went to every place he told us to meet him at. And guess what? He ditched us. So you know what? Bullhorn Betty doesn't That's put real. put up with that at all. To get him fired? No, no, I didn't get him fired. I went up there and what? protested at his job on public <laughs> property. They're lively. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm down because I am exhausted. I'm tired too. Another long day, as you can see, like I got bags under my eyes. I'm so freaking exhausted. Everybody says we're not effective. Looks like we were pretty freaking effective today. I went there. I went. I came here for a, a reason. We've been trying to get him fired forever. That's for else to get him fired? No, no, I didn't get him fired. I went up there and protested at his job on public property in accordance, he didn't meet in accordance with our law. I did nothing wrong. I did everything above board in accordance with the laws law of that? this country and the laws of the state. But afterwards, didn't you guys stand there yeah. and say that you were happy that he was fired? Actually, the only person that said they were happy about that was me. Everybody else was mm. not happy about it. I was absolutely no. proud of myself. How could no. you be proud of that, Betty? Because I am. How, Anything that's else? That's what I'm asking. On it. Take some videos of me because nothing Pay attention, folks. Okay. Who's that? Get over here. Let's get out of here uh, on the road. So, what did you think about today? It was insane. We were um, driving by this house where Don and Candace Wells were working at, and we did a peaceful protest. Um, peaceful. They called right. the police, Candace and Don, and um, their boss actually fired them. We're not sure if they were fired from all their jobs, but from this house, they we know they are fired from, so they had to leave. Are you going to be losing any sleep over the fact that he was fired? No. I don't care. Ha what did you think of their body language and the way they acted? Guilty. 100%. Guilty of what? I, I went to a person's job who's a fucking child predator. A child pimp, a child abuser. No he went into a church and filmed a little girl with a spy pen in a church. Robin, like you have. I to did apologize. not do that, Cam. Marissa did. I you had were no part, part of that. that. No. You were part oh, of why? that. Why? Because though. somebody else did it. So because you were so if you? we were all accused of what people that we hung out with. Can you imagine you're, where you're all of our lives church. would be they right now? Be. Yeah, the church has public videos. Yeah, they can. Uh, didn't matter. I got I got church service on uh, the cams. I got church service on the cams. Good wow. service. Wow, yeah, you lit tonight because <laughs> you ain't like no. Oh, no, wow. no, I haven't even gone through Listen, my first glass of wine yet. Chronicles of the I haven't shady. even drank my first glass of wine, so I'm sick of people telling mm -hmm. me I am lit. Teacher or whoever taking care of them, <coughs> it's not the it's not anyone else's. So I don't, uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's chance, man. Playing the damn stuff if I hear human species camp, I will wire you five hundred dollars. How about that? If you can prove that I said human feces out of my mouth, I will wire okay, you $500 I'll be, I'll right be, now. That'll be the you are now blocked. 
go fuck yourself. I mean, it's just a matter of time before she goes to jail for fraud. Um, it's really just a matter of time. Uh, like she, she's, she's <laughs> two credit card companies. What she think that it's just free money? Like the entitlement of these people that they, they get credit cards and then they run them up and then they don't pay. And they're just like, well, well, fuck it. No, that's not how it works. And then, oh yeah. And then there's, uh, then there's this. Give me just one second, but this won't be as difficult to find. Very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. Now, I haven't got over this whole thing yet. TikToker, filmmaker, real estate agent, Olivia Vitale joins us now. Olivia, thank you who? for taking the opportunity. Thank you for having me on your Look show. Look who it is. So what brand of Italian is your family? Do they go with Vitale? Do they go with Vitale? Do they go with Vital? How do they say their last name? Um, Vitale or Vital. Either one is fine. They're always messing up our names, the Italian names. Uh, but, you know, good for you, except yes. I think you Fuck sold yourself guy. short there and uh, a little bit. And I want to address that um, because I've talked to Mr. Gonsalves and we've dealt with his family a good amount. They have trust issues when it comes mm -hmm. to this investigation. It started uh, very early on and it's not unusual for a victim's family. And it may have been exacerbated here by time and not knowing certain things and not getting information that started to come from outside sources, including you and you've developed quite the bond with them as a result right mm -hmm. yes a few weeks ago um steve reached out to me and it turned i call total bullshit on that i seriously seriously doubt that now do i think that he responded to her yeah of course she ended up interviewing them but Steve didn't just reach out to her, and especially based on this bullshit story that she gives right here. It turns out that Kaylee followed me on TikTok and she watched my videos and shared them with her family. So this is a personal connection and we've been in touch in the past few weeks and they welcomed me into their home and it's been an honor to meet them and help bring awareness to their daughter's case. And uh, people will hear that and say, wait, how did Kaylee follow her and watch her videos about her own murder? No, you started with Gabby Petito and uh, you did some uh, you did some field work on it. You went down into uh, different locations that were relevant. You found a water bottle uh, that you believe I call absolute bullshit on that water bottle finding. Uh, I think she planted that water bottle. I think that she watched Gabby's videos, saw the water bottle and then got a replica of it in order to build herself on YouTube to get and build herself on TikTok to get exactly where she is right now. I totally believe that that happened because all of her behavior since then makes that more feasible than she actually just happened to find this water bottle. Literally everything else that she's done. I mean, look at this right here. Look where I have it paused. She's getting credit for what's been going on with Summer. This channel, this Cuomo asshole, is giving her credit for anything that had to do with Summer. Believe and the family believes uh, may have belonged to Gabby and that was very meaningful to the family. And that's what uh, Kaylee and many others were paying attention to. Uh, how surprised were you and how quick was the growth of your following that is now over a million? And she didn't do jack shit with the um, Kylie Rodney it, case. Yeah, it was pretty surprising. It happened fairly quickly. And it just seems like it's my calling to help uh, missing people and, and victims and their families. 
Now, what is your skill set? How do you know how to find anything that's going on? It's one thing to go down and walk around in a field exactly. and find a water bottle, which is a great little piece of personal industry. Um, but what do you bring to the table and how did you develop, uh, develop those skills? Well, one thing I do bring to the table is bringing awareness to cases with my- Wrong, wrong. You, you don't do that at all, okay? Again, because you travel with Betty. So what you do is jump on bandwagons of cases that everyone is already talking about because you think that it's going to get you clicks and views. And because you make a fancy schmancy looking video because you know how to edit and you have a pretty nice camera, well- that all of a sudden just makes everybody go, ooh, look at Olivia. She's so talented and so sweet. Uh, but you're not doing jack shit. You're just putting together some dramatic looking video about a case that everyone in the world is already talking about. You don't bring awareness to jack shit. You just jump on bandwagons and piggyback off everyone else. And you don't even fucking know anything about these cases. You can't bring awareness to cases that you don't know any anything about. You don't report anything. You're Betty's do girl. I've never seen you actually report on anything. I've seen you sit there and film Betty and edit her videos for her. But you don't do shit. Except kiss Betty's ass, which is really weird. With my following, I have a lot of exposure and all it takes at the end of the day is for one person who might have seen something to see possibly one of my videos and notice something and call the tip line. And that's what I can do is just bring awareness and help cases that are slowly dying or becoming cold get the exposure that they need. Why? Why true crime? <laughs> Why are you one of these new sleuthers? Because it's lucrative. Uh, what is it about these? You could be, you know, you could be obsessed with because so many lucrative. different things in our culture as a pursuit when you're not selling real estate. Why this? True crime is something important to me because it's about helping and making an impact in the world. I feel like it's <laughs> my duty and this gives me passion. To, it gives me something to live for and so Just far, she like hasn't I'm making an impact in the world. So far, she hasn't given any fucking logical answer at all. Everything is just well, um, it's because it's a passion. Um, and and I, I, I like to bring awareness, it's about bringing and creating and bringing and, and making people aware. And there's a passion, um, and 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 you know, it's something that's very important and an impact on the world. And it's a passion. Next question. I promise I'm going to answer it exactly the same way. You uh, said in one of your uh, descriptions in the documentary that you and uh, Mr. Gonsalves shared a moment when the suspect's picture came out and you both said, this is the guy, this is, this is the man. Um, do you believe that? Do you believe that uh, this is the person responsible? And do the Gonsalves family and or you share any questions about anybody else being involved or the question maybe not? You being see how fucking irresponsible this shit is? Because now, now this dickhead Cuomo is putting her in a position to speak for the Gonzalez family. So yeah. <laughs> as solid as is assumed. Personally, I do believe that um, the suspect Brian Koberger is responsible. I can't speak um, on behalf of the Gonzalez family, but um, nice I personally save. think it is Brian. As of now, I believe that he was the only one who did this, but again, it's the early stages and we're not sure exactly. What is your biggest question that remains that hasn't been answered? My biggest question is why, why did he do this? <laughs> and did he ever meet any of the victims in passing, possibly at a restaurant? We know that Zaina and Maddie worked at the Mad Greek. Um, they had vegan options. Brian Koberger was vegan. It's possible that maybe he met the girls maybe at a bar. These are There's so many unanswered questions. Dude, it's a college town. 
every place has vegan options, bro. Every place has vegan fucking options. Like what? And I believe that there is a moment in time when their paths crossed. It's very possible. And that's the question that I have. Did they ever meet in passing? Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't like that guy at all. And I don't like, uh, I don't like uh, Nancy Grace either. Nancy Grace could kiss my ass. Um, yeah, all of these people, man. Uh, I mean, it, it's just, I'm, I'm really, um, I'm glad to see that more people now are talking about the, um, uh, the Athena Brownfield case, uh, simply because it's, it's, uh, it's very confusing. There's, there's, um, you know, is everyone that is responsible uh, being held accountable right now? Uh, I, I want to say yes. I trust law enforcement to be, to be doing their job because it's not just it's not just the uh, Cyril County uh, uh, police that's investigating it. They don't have the manpower, uh, but they have the local tribal police. They have uh, they have the uh, the Oklahoma the OSBI, uh, the Oklahoma State uh, Bureau of Investigation. Um, so, you know, but it's nice to see the bigger channels talking about it. I think Ikenmel was actually live talking about it, which is awesome. Um, and, uh, and yeah, like, I think it's, uh, I think it's great. Um, but yeah, we have an opportunity here to go into this carefully and responsibly and not start throwing, uh, accusations at, and, 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 uh, you know, taking rumors as facts, because right now all we have is rumors. Nothing's been verified by law enforcement other than the details of how these, uh, how the older sister was found um, and how they came about uh, realizing that uh, Athena was missing. And on top of that, there's not even a timeline for when she went missing. Um and I guess that's to, to that, that goes with the fact that these children were abandoned. They were just left alone. Um, so, I mean, what do you expect a five-year-old to, to, to build a timeline for you, uh, an accurate timeline of when Athena actually went missing? She didn't know. This poor little girl was, was by herself for who knows how long and by herself with her sister for who knows how long. Starving. Hungry. So, well, it's Oklahoma, one sweet soul. Uh, I'm sure that there are reservations nearby, and I'm sure there are, you know, um, I, I don't think, I mean, obviously it doesn't fall under their jurisdiction necessarily. They might live on a reservation. I don't see why they would. But, um, but uh, just because the tribal police are involved, I, it's just because Cyril has such little manpower that local law enforcement agencies are volunteering some help. Uh, in this case. So, which is, I'm, I'm very grateful for. Um, but yeah, just going to go over chat a little bit here. One of them was charged with murder. Yes. Agnes lamb, but we still don't know the circumstances um, because they have not declared uh, law enforcement has not officially declared Athena deceased, so we don't know. That makes sense, Jackalope. The tribal police do normally get involved with missing persons in the area. Um, yeah, Jersey devil. I, I don't know what to make of that. Uh, I don't have an opinion on that. I need to educate myself a little bit more on how those laws work. And, uh,
wise guys here saying I'm not even sure that Chronicles of Oblivious uh, is even uh, Italian. <laughs> Stella, welcome. Thank you so much. Man, there was a movie. Oh, man. There was a movie. Um, oh, it was good, too. I can't remember the name of it, but it had Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner was the main guy. And uh, and uh, this girl, he's basically just a tracker, right? Um, he's not law enforcement, but uh, he helps the FBI solve, solve a murder. And it's the the girl who played Scarlet Witch in uh, in the Avengers movies. Um, she's the FBI agent, and and uh, there's this young girl who's uh, part of a a tribe locally, and um, and she ends up murdered, and they're investigating her murder, and uh, and it's really messed up. But it's a really good movie too, man. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I might have to watch that movie again too, man, because I've already watched it like twice. Wind River. There it is, Mr. Deer. KB Investigates was first, though. I just caught, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> but yes, Wind River is the name of the movie, man. So good. Uh, so good. Look at all you guys who know this. Um, but yeah, man, so good. I don't know what I'm going to watch tonight. And I'm eating these edibles too fast. Like I've been like trying to, I'm supposed to be rationing them for like when I go to the gym. Uh, and I, I mean, I still eat one before I go to the gym, but then when I get home, I want another one. And then I eat and then <laughs> I go live. Uh, and then, yeah. And now I know I'm going to like end up kicking it and watching a movie. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm probably going to eat another one. I mean, I'm, I'm not wrecked. I'm not, I mean, I'm tired and I am, I am absolutely relaxed. I can't tell you how good I feel lately. Um, because I, I'm not, I'm not drinking right now at all. Um, like it was just weird and it's not a new year's resolution thing or anything like that it's just a coincidence in the timing but uh like my body was telling me you know dude you, you can't keep doing this forever you know uh and it's not to say that I quit drinking uh but I did give myself like a goal um because I'm you know I really want to take my 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 physical health seriously right now um, and so I'm, I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, going to the gym a lot more. I've been going to the gym, uh, and, and I'm really, yeah, like afterwards after going to the gym and then eating and taking a really hot shower, uh, you guys caught me in a very, very relaxed state. <laughs> um, so yeah, I feel 150% better than I did three weeks ago. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm smoking cigarettes a lot less too. The most I smoke cigarettes uh, is when I'm live, but I have just, uh, I have like three, pa three cigarettes left in a pack that I bought last Wednesday. So that's how long cigarettes have been lasting me. Um, so when I smoke, like when you see me on a live, like I just smoke, I don't know why I just had in the habit of smoking when I'm live. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll probably smoke a total of two cigarettes in like a two hour period. I just put it out and then light it up again and then put it out and then light it up again. But yeah, but anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I'm really grateful that you guys joined me tonight. I had a lot of fun. You know how we like to do. Sometimes we just like to like to shoot the shit. Um, 
and uh, yeah, there, there was definitely stuff to talk about. So, um, of course, on these cases, uh, the Athena case, I will continue to keep you guys updated as much as possible uh, and give my uh, opinions on these things uh, as things unfold. Um, and you're not going to really hear me talk much about the, uh, the Idaho case anymore, because I don't think that there's anything to talk about, um, is, uh, is, uh, Brian Koberger an incel probably, uh, but to me, that information doesn't really do me any good. I understand the interest, but to me, that information doesn't do any good until, it goes to trial uh, and it becomes relevant. Um, but until then, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, DCP does uh, some great like you got to give DCP credit, man. My boy, Josh, Dad Challenge podcast. Uh, he's a good friend and you, you got to give him some credit, man, because he doesn't do this stuff like he really uh, he relies on his chat. Uh, mostly to to help them with uh, the 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 digging of information and and just going down the rabbit hole of information in these in these cases uh, and he's a very logical and very scrupulous guy and so when he does it he does it very well and very uh, and and very um, heartfelt he's very victim friendly very victim uh, aware and uh, and he's he does a good job like I mean. The Gabby Petito thing was the first time that he actually covered a crime case on his channel, and he ended up being featured uh, a lot. His his coverage of that ended up being featured a lot on the Peacock documentary for it. So that's how natural Josh is <laughs> to being a, a scrupulous uh, real crime channel. That's why he calls it real crime. Jokingly, he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't do, you know, real crime or whatever like that because he meant to say true crime. He just didn't realize that that's even what it's called. So he called it real crime. And then I was just like, from now on, that's what we're going to call it because you're uh, <laughs> you're you're good at this uh, and your heart's in the right place because the true crime community has just become really fucked up. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh you're talking about the thumbnail yeah <laughs> Chris, crystal light clarity dude i'm dying she actually does look like hatch i know dude i was in a band called hatchet face <laughs> anyways guys i love you guys very very much uh we will do this again very soon my friends